Welcome back to the Vermont House Appropriations Committee. It is January 10th, 2024. We uh, are just coming back after we had a public hearing uh, on the budget adjustment and took a moment and uh, trying to get caught up on some of the news in the building because we don't go to the floor often that some of the activities that are going on around the building are is fascinating. But um, so why don't we take a couple minutes to kind of, if anybody has any um, things they'd like to talk about of what we heard during the public hearing. And um, then I know Representative Bloomley needs to be to the floor for a bill. And then why don't we, if there's anybody's budget areas that they feel that they're, they've taken a look at or the, either the language or the dollars that we can just lightly pencil close, not close close, just just check off that unless something happens, you're you're okay with it, and we'll get a temperature check on the rest of the room to see how much uh, how much. And also tomorrow we'll be doing this exercise a, a good amount in the afternoon, right? And uh, tomorrow morning at nine, cannabis. Ten is Grady. Eleven lunch. And then we're going to be, um, just, I've got to come up with a better term than ch checking off or combing through or going through, going through what the BAA currently has mm -hmm. and maybe talking about any kind of anything outstanding because all of us have been busy with our counterparts all over the place. We've got things that we know are coming that aren't in here. We've got to react to what's in here and react to thinking about what's not in here and how are we going to schedule all that. All right, so why don't we go to what people would like to talk about in, in, in um, reaction to what we heard at the public hearing. So I have a, one thought, and I, I know that others will bring up other things, but um, our first uh, speaker, Jim, talked about the <clears throat> and spending money without a plan around the dispatch. So. Are we going to? Are we actually hearing from somebody about dispatch in the budget adjustment? Remains to be seen. Okay. Uh, having some conversations with the chair of House Ops. We're going to have another conversation tomorrow. They have had uh, the commissioner of public safety and the director of uh, E nine one one, who are co chairs of that task force in to kind of give a overview update of where they were on the task force. Yeah. Uh, they got tremendously behind last summer, uh, as you might expect, with yeah. getting diverted towards the public safety commissioner. I mean, right. Um, with the flooding and emergency. So, um, but um, it is in process. Uh, Chairman McCarthy and I will be talking further tomorrow. And um, we'll, seeing where his committee is, we'll determine whether or not it would be productive to have them in here. Um, we may need to do some changes to the language yeah. nonetheless, because right. uh, the language that is in the budget last year allowed for the Joint Fiscal Committee to okay certain funding. Uh, they don't, it expired at the end of 2023. So we could extend it, mm -hmm. or we could put the language <coughs> in the BAA. Um, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll know more after tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because you know this whole dispatch thing started when you and I were on um, ropes in that 2021, 21, 22. Yeah, in the middle yes. of yes. That, that wording, which did about as well as the wording this year. Right. Right. It's like we have a few of those topics where this happens. So, um, yeah, I think, I mean, I feel like I've sort of lost track of where all that is and that sort of brought yeah, it to One of the things they told the cops was that um, no one had come forward and said they were looking for seed money for a pilot. Yeah. But that's the sort of update it would be good to get because this is a lot of money we're talking about. And yeah, we want to be sure it's we can. I just, I want to. Yeah, be good. in sync with where it is. Right. Um, so I'll, I'll do more tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Great. 
So I can honestly say that, all right, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but we heard some um, terrific support repeatedly from certain places. So if, if we, state space. All right, so I've got eight things that I think we've heard of. <coughs> Meals on Wheels. Food Bank. VNA, that's the uh, uh, home health and hospice, the skilled nursing, adult ed, Vermont Housing Conservation Board, and I'm just going to, and DHFA. What about a question about that? The testimony we got from Amy on bus. Oh, wait a minute. Was there testimony? In addition to the 50 million for B and C D and the 20 some million for the missing middle, yeah. was there an assertion that the temporary shelter of the of the March and April awards? They want 12 million more? That that's I think that's the eight and the four that's already in the budget. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's you know it's rounded. So it's it's in the budget. It's well, in the budget help. adjustment. I think they're supporting it. I'm not sure they're supporting the way it's being proposed to be used. But, they weren't but 12 but minutes. 12, million. 12 million. Million. minutes. I wish it was 12 minutes. 12 million for that is is what's in there. That's that's what I should be talking about. There was also some other stuff around that that I yeah. think Fred let me, Knapp let me just about. yeah, yeah. We just got the, the so that was all right. So there was housing and in a big circle, and then the New England Dairy Organic Farms was one, flood relief and the youth. Center and then right. That's what I have. That look at uh, representative. Is there anything else in there well, that is would, that I didn't categorize at least? I missed adult days. What adult uh, representative Williams said at the very beginning. What was the ask? Their ask is ten million. Ten million. Which oh, is twenty five homes. Yeah. Yeah, twenty-five million. Ten and fifteen. 15. Okay. Ten million. Fifteen for is for the resilience. municipal tax remediation, and ten is for lifting homes up, up or restoring them. Or out, or yeah. Out. Buy out or lift up. That was is the flood res resilience community fund with right. the ten million. Yeah, yeah. So that was repeated twice. But the buy, if I may, the. The, the buyout program that we set up in place, it's not a special fund, but we set in place with opera funds and we added 4.5 million of general funds a year or two ago. Um, that was for the non-FEMA eligible buyouts, but it did not include the landslide hazards. Uh, and so I think that's where they wanted the, more, the flexibility to be able right. to address the landslide hazards. Was that the so, flood resilience? That's under that. It's kind of special fund, but it's that community. It's called right now. It's called um, I think flood recovery community, community fund. fund. So that's the. But it's not a special. Fund. Fund. It's, so right. it's the ten million. Does the ten million go beyond the landslides? It's a, I think they're non FEMA. Eligible. That's all we know. It's not for the non but, but we specified in the ARPA funds and the state dollars in prior years to have that dollar, those dollars being used for flood only, not not the landslide related hazards that could so be. There's a, a gap. There's a yeah, gap there's there a gap that's exposing. Um, yeah. Representative Dickinson. Yes, I did a tally. You did, and oh, I came out with the number one. There were seven of them requesting about $2 million, more or less, for food bank and other Meals on Wheels. And there was four, uh, uh, 500000 for adult learning. There was three, and I'm counting one more in there, from Sharon Cedar regarding housing, DHCB. She didn't mention DHCB, but there was, there was at least three that actually specifically mentioned that she was maybe in that for also housing homeless. And then there was two for the Barry Montpelier, twenty-five million for the flood resilience. Right. And, my, and then the rest of them were like one time only. And my favorite was Zachary Ralph Watson's, which um, was for the it. Habitat for Humanity missing middle. It's missing middle. It's also one thing in housing that actually is allowing people to build equity, and create wealth. 
Did, did you count that in the three for, or is that a separate category? That no, that's a separate category because this is different enough from the others that I think it's, yeah, though it's certainly a housing issue. It's the missing middle. No, it's that's the several on the missing middle. You could add that then to the others and say that that's. In the hat. Yeah, you'd say that that could be four or five, depending on how you count the other one. So we have one for adult days and the youth center in Newport. One of the interesting things about the missing middle was, was, was the testimony the testimony we got earlier from um, what's your name the head of uh, uh, Vermont House and Finance are Mora yeah, yeah. was saying they kind of they, did she give us language she was going to give us language because they were the 25 the eligibility no, they want to change it, the language so that they can extend affordability to more of the missing middle so units. I don't think they would give it to us. They would testify yeah. to the House General. The House General, okay. You know yeah. what I mean? Or, or yeah. the committees of jurisdiction if, if, if they might be coming in, which is why the communications are, you know, important. Um, one question that I have that I wanted to follow up with Representative Williams on his testimony, because if you remember in, in uh, Douglas Farnham's testimony around the FEMA dollars and that schedule that I had to do that whole FEMA translation thing for, you know, there's the 50 million, there's the municipal piece, then they had the buyouts for 200 homes. So he's accounting for that in there for 200 homes. It's going to take two to three years. So I don't know. And that's something that's on my to do list is to find out is what the administration had on the FEMA report, the or his testimony, how does that relate to what Jonathan is asking for the buyouts for those houses? Good. I don't know. And so um, also what's not in the BAA that I'm gonna need to track down or we can all, because we all work hard. Um, in the Budget adjustment, there is 30 million for FEMA match, which is my understanding is the state building. The, the, the state for base. now. Right. For now. So down payment, because I thought it was going to come in at 50 for just for now. So I was a little surprised <laughs> to see it at 30. And then elsewhere in the language is the six million for FEMA municipal <laughs> match. So if you look at what Douglas brought us, I thought that the six million for municipal match, which it still may be, and I just don't know the answer to, it, um, is was the help <clears throat> where the FEMA come in at 90, 10, 10, the state chips in the 5%, and then the other 5% a municipality is responsible for. So we were considering, or people were considering, do we help the municipality in the capacity <laughs> of how pick it up 5% match. So I thought when I saw the 6 million, I had the question of that. I am not, I don't think so based on what we've heard from Adam and others, that that is strictly our 5% and that there is nothing for the municipalities. So I don't think this group of the, whatever we call them, that are aware of that gap right now in, in the, in the BAA or in the thinking of help for municipalities. And I think the administration, the administration did not, from the best I can figure. So I need to get a handle on that. And when is that due? And ask, is that something, is that be municipal help more needed before the ask that we heard? Or could that be something that's later and that what they're asking for is more that, that they need now? So we'll continue to have that conversation between now and a couple of days. And if I may, yeah, you may recall that um, um, the recovery officer did mention that the distribution of those funds are dictated by the ERAF rule, the Emergency Relief Assistance Fund, and that when we triggered the 90-10, so we're, we are talking yeah. about 10% non-federal match. Right. We may also know that in that ERAF rule, 
it does say that um, there's an already a built-in incentive. We contribute to, on average, half that amount, but it really depends on right. the actions that the municipality has taken. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's, it's less. less. Exactly. But, but it is dictated by that rule. We are the only state in the region and few in the country that actually contribute towards that non-federal map. So we already are contributing. The, one, the reason why I'm mentioning this is because next year there'll be another flood. The following year there'll be another flood. And the precedent that it sets for us to override the existing yeah. rule does result in a precedent that could be unaffordable. I'm, I'm not suggesting we do it. I'm just trying to understand when they say it. What did it include and what doesn't it include? Just to get a handle of so when you start, when we start saying, well, yeah, let's do that. We do, do our, yeah, we don't know what it means and what they're thinking. Yeah. I mean, both the administration and our understanding of when we pass it, when we say that line item, it's the, I feel like it right now, and it's the just state's share that we've traditionally done. And so the question then is like, we can, not the we, but the big we. And the reason why I mentioned it is I remember two floods that poor Ripton, back to back, two floods in one summer, a month apart, both so called 100 year flood events. And it drove up their municipal costs substantially, but they were on the hook to address right. that. And I, for the, their right. municipal share of the non federal. So I just know that we should just have our eyes wide open right. and and look our eyes wide open to like where where certain municipalities are being hit 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 we we may and we may not have the capacity you know you guys are looking at it we don't have the capacity to respond we may have bits and pieces to help and so i'm trying to make sure that we place those chips can you their most i'm talking about something i mean i i completely understand those of these tasks. I don't understand why they're in the BAA. Here's why. One part, the municipal relief, they want because the voters have to vote. The voters are not going to have the results of the BAA by the time mm -hmm. the town meeting right. passes. It's much less than the April, so it's not going to happen. The second is the difference between the budget. The fiscal 24 budget is going to be effective on July 1. It's going to be a is effective, what, in April? April? I mean, like, big deal. I, I just it wonder is, why. It's a good thing, though, and I got yeah. I picked up on the uh, town meeting week piece. But it's just, just I mean, I suppose, I don't think, I don't know, do you think I'm wrong? I don't think uh, you can't the city wrong. manager in Berkeley, in the, in the, <laughs> the, city, the city manager in Montpelier isn't going to, the council can't adopt a budget for submittal to the voters no. on the grounds of what the house has done in the VA. Anyway, we have flood relief. Yeah, I have another. going to the bill. All right. So, right, go ahead. Unrelated to all of what we've discussed, the one piece that I do want us to not lose sight of is that there was a request for a language change around the AIDS. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, so that we want to be sure that was one of the things we heard about. I've got that. Yeah, you've got that. Okay. And so we, we want to be sure we yeah. And we that. have language change in the bill that the governor recommended around that. But it might not be what they're Same. thinking of. Right. So we we'll want to be sure that we don't yeah. that. So I would recommend to you that we take a moment, probably before, you know, over the weekend or tomorrow. That I don't know if I'm going to look to Aaron if all of the submissions we might give them a little time before we the, they're, they'll be on our web page to read any of the other documents. There are others that did not come in person or on Zoom that submit things. So um, and the BHCB sure was fifty million. 50 Some, million. And somewhere else I thought I'd heard twenty five million. So twenty five million surprise. was from VHFA. Right, I knew that, but I thought that. VHCB was also. They have a, there, there's two components. Exactly. There's the, we need this in order to be able, we're short for the um, the projects in the pipeline. Yes. Yeah. Then there's the, can you send a signal for the projects that would be in the pipeline if the signal is there? And, you know, that's always <laughs> because. 
think we've made it a priority to fund the HCB. I don't know how many signals we need to keep sending. Because um, in the end, we actually do fund the HCB. Yeah. They, they, yeah. Well, we all think we'll be sending signals as much as we can. Let's see. They're not, they gave us one of the witnesses. Yeah. It was it was Nancy from Everett. She said, <laughs> well, maybe it's just Everett. 157 are in develop, quote, end quote. 440 are in the pipeline. Right, and she, they need 20 million to finance the existing pipeline. pipeline. Is what I wrote. Well, the, the ones, I don't even know if they have enough money. Do they have enough money to do the ones in development? I, I believe that when you talk with people that work with them, and, and often when I speak with entities like this, I ask them, when do you run out? Yeah. I want to know, where do I need to meet you on the calendar? Right. You know, and so there are entities that are in more critical timing. Way. I do believe that VHCB is is totally committed. So there is some desire to respond, both not just from us, but OK, it's just good to know. Good to know where they're at. Um, and I'm sure government uh, general, housing general, general housing, general, general housing. housing is hearing and we'll have recommendations as well. I hope Gus is testifying somewhere. He's in the oh, building yeah, today. Yeah. I saw him in the building. Yeah, he's here. Yeah. Presumably he's testifying that's general. So. Yeah, I would imagine. <laughs> but I'm sure we have conversations with him as well. Yeah. Representative Harrison has had his hand up. Thank you, sir. So I mean every one of the requests today is is certainly a, a worthwhile cause challenge and I don't I don't pay a lot of attention to the multiples because a lot of the advocacy groups are part of a state network and they're doing a job I've been an advocate before um, and I've been guilty of sharing my message to you know members around the state and we need the message delivered so um, so more power to it but I, I don't want to take anything away from any of the ass um, the challenge I have, it's all about priorities, and we, at least I don't know, maybe you have a better idea of what we have to work with, if anything, and additionally, and while we like to get the BAA done before we look at the budget, the budget next year's budget, budget what we did last year, which I don't have any problem with, is that some of our one-time asks were in the one time for the recommend uh, using part of that surplus going into this year's budget. So, you know, if if uh, they have pick a number, thirty million in housing, fifty million in housing, in the budget we're going to get in a couple weeks. You know, it's okay for, for me taking that and putting it a couple months earlier, but I kind of like to know the big picture. The, well, yeah, kind of, because if we spend it here and they weren't spending it in the other one, what do we now have to do without? I, I don't know. Yeah, you, we're, in, we're, in a, we're in an interesting box because it's a little bit more sobering. This year is the well, and, and around what we're going to be. Which may be why, and, and you have the more history, certainly on the committee, um, you don't do a lot of one time funding in the BAA. It's a lot of it's, you know, balancing the various accounts. And, you know, Medicaid is one that always got to be balanced one way or another. And, and there's certainly some with DCF and whatnot. But, you know, I've got an overtime issue in public safety because, you know, the continual shortage of state police. But um, so you have to do those things. So, so I'm sorry I, no, you're not. not. It's, it's good conversation. It's difficult. I just don't yeah. know how to say. I mean, I have a thousand for adult ed. I want adult ed. I want people to get a high school education. So they can but, get a job. Actually, I think it's yeah, a workforce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but what am I taking it away from? I, I think adult ed is a good example of what you're talking about. What I think you're saying, well, you're saying two different things. One is you're saying, gee, it'd be nice what if we I had, saying? you're saying, gee, it'd be nice if we had the budget when we made all these decisions on the BAA, right? That's yeah. one thing. 
Yeah. But aside from that, unless you have some magic uh, over there, uh, we're not, that's not going to happen. So um, you're saying we ought to think of the BAA as a place to adjust things rather than as a place to make massive new appropriations, particularly when we don't have the money. Or we don't know if we have Yeah, money. or we don't know. Well, the, I think a good example of where that makes sense is the 500,000, because what happened was, is we appropriated 1.5 million, and Senator Weston, Westman in West Wisdom, uh, he was unhappy with the funding formula, and so he said zero. And then our conferees said, okay, how about 1 million summer study and then we'll make up the other 500,000 at BAA. And that we're, that's where we are right now. So there's an example of something where kind of if we can work it out with the Senate, it's what we intended. So those are, yeah, those are kinds of your adjustments. They, they didn't. Well, and another request that we've had in years past, and I think, shame on me if it only came to me, um, but my, our local um, community access television was looking for an adjustment, and I'm surprised uh, because they're organized. I'm surprised they didn't make that ask today. I think they wanted in the budget. budget. No, they didn't because it, I think it's coming in through another budget. They've got a bill so right there too. If, Thank you. If, if you recall last year, want to keep that. Orca, Orca is part of that. Actually, we yeah. moved where they're located. They're no longer in the serving. They are now housed in the Secretary of State. Yeah, office. I think it's going to come in their budget. I think it's as there. a backstop oh, to the bill they're trying to pass. Yeah, exactly. Okay. But so no, in thinking. my conversations with them too, it's like, all right, the Secretary of State has, and I don't know if we'll do people, you know, that's, but there's a really good place for their advocacy. So that's why you didn't see them like normally. Okay. Yeah. So that, so we stay tuned. Maybe that's. <laughs> on the yeah, side. first watch that makes some sense. Thank you. You're welcome. I love it when I can actually make sense. I, I will say though, I do feel some discomfort because there are people who can speak here and there are people who can't speak here at these um, meetings. And in particular, no one from an agency can come here and say, no. we want to treat food insecurity. The most efficient way to do it is put more money in staff because it doesn't require us to use scarce labor to deliver food and it gets it everywhere you go. You know, and, and obviously there's some issues around being able to manage it. But my point is we get a very asymmetrical perception of the challenge. And these needs are great, but I don't know. Anyone who came today is either affiliated with someone who has the capacity to lobby. Right. And some of the people who have the most acute needs in the state, they can't afford to lobby or they represent an institution that can't lobby for some reason. So I think we have to read through what we hear, yeah, exactly, and we listen, yeah. and we have to read through it. So I think I think that's I think yeah. what you're we're asking not, for we're is we're the way. Saying, is there yeah, you know yeah. just uh, um, some members asked if we could have a moment to just yeah. debrief what we heard. That's yeah. fine. So we yeah. This is my 16th year of hearing yes. public. I'm surprised that well. What are you surprised about that? There's not that you know in the past would be 98 people. <laughs> in fact, it to be a. a well, we had a hundred people. We had a hundred people. much activity in the budget. Hmm? Didn't we have like a hundred and two testify at the budget? Yes. So it's half. But what's also striking is the areas where we heard, yeah. they all deal with one or two agencies, and they all deal with yeah, cases where we have unresolved policy issues. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and to your point, though, I mean, the notice that went out, what, in the last week about the hearing, unless you're I into, attention. Right. You know, and looking yeah. at the state website every day, um, you know, then you might want to get another life. But um, you know, you're not you're not going to even know. Uh, or get elected. Well, you can get elected. Yeah. The rest of anyway, the I don't want to beat up. Well, a, 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 I just want yeah. an, a, a, a moment to honor yeah. people that wanted to maybe have some, something to say. It's not like we're making decisions, and it's now uh, three twenty. So let's. It's I just critical. To mention, yeah. We didn't mention, I think, a person by the name of Teresa 
talked about a five hundred dollar care. Five hundred thousand dollar need for Vermont Care. I don't think we mentioned it when we're going down. Oh, you know, I'm just adding, it, yep. I'm just adding it to that. List. So we have it's in her language also yeah. that we have. Yeah. She had the language. Okay. So she it it was five hundred more. Right. So from three hundred to eight hundred, and her yeah. language shows that. So that would be something that right. we would. I just want to mention the language. Keep, keep, I don't know about you. This is just you know. Do do you? But I keep asking it gives me their name so I spell it right. And um and then where they're from and I can make notes. And and then I use this as my guidepost that goes into the public hearing. And as we start to tear apart at the end, it's a good reference. Well, just, I was just, looking for that list. Was that on the Yeah, it's on our website. Yeah. yeah, by the way, Aaron, a nice. thousand thank yous for delivering that to us. Electronically, because for the first time you could make be able to take notes on it. Yeah. Right. yeah, thank you. Sometimes I don't know, it's well, it's just a personal note, and then we'll let Lynn Dickinson go, go next. Um, this, my this, this role is I have to, I have to not look at the screen. How about, how about, how about and I get so far behind, how about don't appropriate 20 million dollars to Dale, we appropriate 19. Well, we have to actually, you have to, you have to figure out where that goes, but or even 18. Yeah. Um, we, we have the capacity to do a lot of things and anybody else. Well, no, I don't want to cut them. I just want to send a strong message. I mean, what, what happens if we, they don't have, She's leaving I mean, what happens to now? the subject. No, they, they would just turn down, well, you know, they probably find the money somewhere else in their budget is what they do. So this is the good to carry forward their infinite Wait, world. Yeah, I just want to add to that that what I hear Jim saying is that we have needs and we have wants. We have needs that absolutely have to be covered because they need these things absolutely, whether it's the whether you like it or not, the traveling nurses for right. Dale or the traveling nurses for the hospital or the traveling nurses for whatever or other things that absolutely have to be done because we absolutely have to do them versus the things that are nice. And um, you're right, there's a statewide, the statewide organizations, they can come in here and they can just list it, you know, they all come and say the same thing and they all, so the tally was probably not the most accurate thing I could have done, but, you know, I think that there's something to be said for sitting down and really think, what are the needs of Vermonters that we absolutely have to make sure that these agencies or these institutions can do? That, they're going to be there and we need to do them. So those are the priorities we have to sit down and. We will sort out a lot, but here's now that you have your budgets, right? And you've been working on your budgets. Which I, I would ask you to look in your budgets, not just the BAA, but the next one you get in a couple of weeks. And we're going to need to find money when we want to move something to a priority. Right. Yeah. And people. I don't know if this group has worked, has understood that when you, when you, when we say, can you find, go and find a million dollars out of, out of Dale, go and find 2 million out of DCF or out of, out of uh, judiciary that we, if we want to be able to do something, we are going to have, and even if we didn't need any money at all, there is a real good reason for the fact of finding out, and you're, this is your budget, you know, the 17 million now for the emergency relief at nursing home to look underneath, this is what your job is, is to look under the hood of that, find out how many places, what it is, what did it do, what did it get us? Could they get away, could 15 million do it? Why couldn't 15, why is it 17 and not 15? That's the tough questions now. You'll have them interactions with your budget areas, right? And the same is true for these nonprofits. I mean, like yeah. $2 million for Meals on Wheels. Well, I mean, I guess I can understand that, but I yeah. could have been 1.5. Well, I just don't know. And it could be anything that's on there that, you know, parent-child centers weren't in here or something like that. But but even if we had no, no need of fit on the, on the, if we didn't have any need, we have an incredible important role as overseers of these dollars. And we're never going to be able to do it all because we can't. So narrow down your scope to three things that you really want to dig into that's the most important things that you need to find out about. Go ahead, ma'am, and then we'll switch. I think that's a wonderful thing to say in, in that vein. What I was struck by how many people are talking about the workforce shortage 
we also need to think about whether the way we're doing a service is the most effective way to do it, given that workforce shortage. And there are times when we are investing, I think, in the most labor intense way. And if we really have a profound workforce shortage, maybe we need to be asking, is there a different way to make this investment that doesn't tie up every single pair of hands in the state? Because, you know, when you look at, I'm, I, I am sick to my stomach about the fact that construction costs went up 30% last year. Yeah. That means we lost a third of our investment mm -hmm. in housing right, right. out of the gate. That's a workforce issue as well. We can't have everybody working in food, like food distribution. We, we don't have enough people for that. So we have to think about ways to address the price, the needs, the interests, the food insecurity, and not the individual programs, because we do not have enough people and we do not have enough dollars. Oh, I hear you. So that's, that's a good, we work on what, three, four levels? We've got like our immediate things that we have to balance the budget and what we're doing right here to get to the short term. Then we've got a long term look. And then we've got the big policy switches that take that's the glacier piece. But it took a decade to get certain things done to be around. I'm, I'm just privileged enough to have been around to watch a glacier move and, and make some changes. But then there are opportunities that are that there's the um, quick change and a well thought out change. And, and when the shooting or the almost shooting in Fairhaven, I watched this whole entire building and the administration change 180 degrees in six weeks and signed on the front steps. Oh, that does not happen. So it's big changes. Because we don't see it as an emergency, right? Well, I mean, you know, but the big changes take legislation, doggedness, takes 10, 15 years to make big changes. And unfortunately, Vermont, is changing faster than some of our ability to keep up with. And that's 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 the, the bigger picture. All right, so on that happy note, it's 3.30. Can I switch gears from, great, keep this, you know where to keep this, right? Um, now move to, does anyone, I'll just leave the floor open. Does anybody have anything in their budgets that they would like us to go to that they would like to either bring in enlightenment, tell us like how it's terrific and you don't have any problem or how it's so terrible that you want to strike it out and or you want to change the language? You want to go by the spreadsheet or you want to go? By I want to go by where you would love us to go. I will start to dictate tomorrow afternoon that we will go from starting at A and go down to Z just to go through it quickly. But right now it's just like, okay, is there anything so we don't take 10 minutes to get to something that you've been waiting for? There. Okay, can I go to like one of the very, the very first item on the spreadsheet? So for those that are it's, uh, watching, it's the 209 public safety, yep. 1.81 million. Mm -hmm. um, and as it is explained here, it's overtime due to homicide and additional criminal investigations. Um, um, totally understandable. I reached out to the finance director um, from EPS and what I received back, and if, if this isn't satisfactory, uh, we can certainly have a bit, but I just wanted to okay. read it to you. The overtime is being driven by incidents. We know about the high number of homicides, which calls in the state police each time, uh, and the activation of special teams. So when you have uh, rescue missions, for example, as we've had with the flooding, uh, you know, that's all part of uh, DPS. Major crimes units and crime scene search teams, as well as overtime to cover shifts from both sworn officers. We know there are about 55, give or take, uh, vacancies in the state police um, and the PSAPs. Um, they, that's been a chronic problem with not enough staff to um, for the dispatch uh, services. So. Um, what they did, what the finance director did, is he took the actual through <laughs> November, and then put the, the average debt uh, through the 11 pay periods, came up with how much overtime they were spending versus what was in the fiscal year 24 budget, <laughs> um, and it was 1.81 million 
and change uh, different. Uh, so yeah, he projected what they ran for the 11 pay periods to the rest of the year, 26 pay periods. So we're halfway through, almost halfway through the year. So that's how it came out to I don't have anything I can poke holes into it. If you would like more, certainly invite them to come in. Um, I'm satisfied with that. We know about the staffing shortage. Uh, and we know about some of the extraordinary um, activities, uh, especially with the murder investigations that we've had. So, yes. Uh, well, we'll we'll there, there's this is a pressure that we'll hear on the courts piece. I didn't realize we have 88 homicides being prosecuted right now in Vermont. 88. Like Does that, that seem that like a, back that back quite a while? Yeah, exactly. Years, it's like that seems like a big number. Uh, all right, so this is for the committee. Uh, Representative Harrison has now, uh, this is his section of the budget. He's to take a look at it, he's got a recommendation. He's not feeling that this is anything that, that we want to take more time with, unless the committee wants to have public safety come next week to, otherwise we can check it off that this is highly likely. Anything we check off, and I'm saying this to the people in the middle of, we are just saying, we're not going to ask for any more testimony on it. We can always change our mind. Nothing is decided until everything is decided. I was just about to quote our esteemed representative Mahali. I wrote that, that down. Well. Nothing is decided until, until everything is decided. We've learned. But we do need to knit knit one and pearl too. So if we move along. So I have a question. Just, sure. Go ahead. Is, uh, just a comment to make. I think I think what you're proposing makes sense. I also think this is a good example. Wouldn't it be nice if we knew what was in the FY25 budget at the same time? Not that we would change this on here, but it would be helpful information. Whatever I want budgets to be your best, honest, you know, their yeah. estimate of what's going to take place. And, right. And, you know, every year we're back here for the veterans home, but I, I know, we, just know a, a bit, uh, we know there's a nursing issue that they're going to have to use, and that's just not going to turn around next year. So be honest so that right. we may not have any funds the next BAA. Right. right. Well, the same thing with the um, ERFs, uh, 17 million that we heard about from Dale. And the veterans one. So we know every year is well, it's, And it's Kari's problem too. How do you send the message about where we're headed as opposed to where we're Don't, don't do anything in yeah. BAA. <laughs> Well, you, yeah, I'm not we'll suggesting that. that. <laughs> yeah, you've heard that here first. <laughs> um, right. Our, this is an accounting thing in a met, you know, policy pieces. It's, our documents do represent some of our, be our best values. And, but, we, but we're here to manage to say, is this what we want to, um, okay, or, you know. What would, here's an example of what maybe if Representative Harrison said, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know if they actually really did all that over time, and I need to go look. Right? You know, so we don't have as you much. To check the time cards. Check the time cards. Do you remember? You remember <laughs> not long before the gentleman who got caught? Oh yeah. Yeah. Caught, yeah. We had a, a yeah we. Well, well, not everybody in they, the government. And not to pick on state police, but evidently yeah. six were put on leave for some. Alleged infraction or no. And then that. Well, you know, that's going to mean overtime for the other. Yeah. Up in the kingdom. <laughs> there are, there are. I don't know how many times I've been listening to this where I find myself wanting to ask, why the hell didn't you think of that before when you were doing your budget? Right. Particularly, for example, the 10 million, and the numbers are huge, like the $10 million from the agency. What was it? They just, we have, we have a $10 million number for one of the agencies. What, I'm sorry, I can't remember. And it was, I just thought, oh, it was uh, staff time for, to implement the uh, enterprise software. Oh, that's and I was just thinking. Yeah, we're, we'll everybody get knows that when you have enterprise software, there's huge staff time. Right, 
Yeah. What what changed? I feel like what changed? Why you know? And and in some ways, the problem is how do you enforce that discipline? It seems to me the only way to enforce it for us is to say no. We, we have that um, on that subject. Seriously. There are I don't so I just want people that what, the activity that happens is so much that happens not always at this table because you guys do your work. Last year was our first time through. Now you have your budgets and now you go back and really refine and refine again. People have, uh, people have been meeting on that very subject, sir. Um, just so you know, is it okay? But Representative Shy, you know, has the budget for HR and Representative Harrison has the budget for ADS. And we have our JFO um, IT consultant because if somebody sat in front of me and said, I need $100 million for, I don't know, step up, whatever. We're, we've discovered that the legislature does not have always the expertise to evaluate a software package to find out if it's what it should be. So we hire Lisa, who is in JFO, to review IT projects and things with us and for us. She will be here Friday, by yeah, the way. She'll be here Friday on this. So that activity is happening, and they've met with her, and they've met with... So guess who gets to come in to have to testify on that? Sarah Clark. Yes. <laughs> she is the deputy secretary for AOA. And Denise, who I can't think of her last name, Denise Riley Hughes, Riley Hughes who is the secretary. acting or now no, secretary, secretary of ADS. No, so they're going to, they are coming in and I won't bother Aaron, but it, it's on our agenda. And, and Lisa, from JFO, and Lisa from JFO will be here on Listen. that subject. Stay tuned. Yes, ma'am. Can they help us with what are appropriate performance measures to talk about ADS? I mean, I can tell you bluntly that when ADS was created, our budget went up. We got 20% less service, and every contract took longer to contract. Mm -hmm. How do they've been in? They've been here for seven years. Are we actually saving money? And are we actually getting better service? And my guess is in some places, maybe. But, you know, you look at the, the you know, we've got all these, you know, we're giving up federal money because of <laughs> IT programs on multiple fronts mm -hmm. in DCF. The state assessment was rolled out like two weeks before they had to administer, which everyone knows is bad practice, but the contract itself took something like 20 months. Like, what's going on? So I would take that. This yeah. is me personally. And I would, I would to the esteemed member from Brattleboro, who is part of, been part of and very uh, knowledgeable in the uh, measures and performance measures piece and the government accountability who created the... The nine, ten, twelve, what are oh, the recommendations? The, is, it's different. the recommendations yeah. where we measure. And so that subject is for us to ask and then government op uh, operations. Because it's cycle, we need cycle it. time, right? Or something like that. Because mm -hmm. the problem with the RBA is around your state fund, like what state funding do you control? And it's pretty, it's depending on the agency. Yeah. That's not actually a meaningful indicator. So your question yeah. is, is really well-founded, especially mm -hmm. when we're looking at dollars here and then mm -hmm. saying, um, looking at and working with putting in a bill next for where are we and talking with the chair of the account, the government accountability and asking them, are you looking at this or how, you know, those, are, those are the places in, in my, um, do you have anything to add to that? Well, ultimately I think it's, it's, a, it's a fusion less about what happens in a committee mm -hmm. uh, and more about what happens in all the committees in terms yeah. of like how, how do we, when, when we get, for instance, in a few weeks, we're going to get the budget presentations, they're going to have outcome measures. And those outcome measures are uh, superficial and don't tell the story of the actual performance of that program Anyone who's on our side of the table should be asking, <laughs> why is that okay? How do you actually know? Mm -hmm. And the problem that we have, and this is where, you know, like RBA says, don't immediately cut budgets. It's trying to kind of encourage a more collaborative approach because the, the off with your head, if you don't perform, tends to lead to people not telling you what's really right. going on. So it's like, how do we stay in a collaborative mode around what real improvement looks like 
and talk about what's really going on. And that's where like DCF, when I was asking him about those metrics, mm -hmm. you know, with the commissioner, I was trying to get at like, well, I think it was the call. It was the it was, uh, Department of Corrections, what you did a really good job. Oh, I did well, I did 10%. In a year, yeah, yeah. Well, that was you know that was one, and then the other was the uh, the call line a contract right. for DCF, right? Where if the if their purpose is just simply to reduce the amount of time that people are waiting, then they then they're going to measure that differently and evaluate that differently than if their purpose is to help people actually get access to services faster. And you know, and they what they were reporting was essentially we've cut the wait times down but nothing about the actual outcome for individual commodities we should care about that that's a 1.5 million dollars if we're just spending 1.5 million dollars to not look incompetent that should matter to us <laughs> right if that's what's going on yeah or, or honestly portray it as that we were just trying to respond to the public pressure to not have people on the phone forever and but they it's did. not the root cause i mean uh, well, by analogy, cause, yes, when I but got, first came result, to the yeah. agency of education, the phones are ringing nonstop. It was teachers who couldn't get the licenses. Hi, one of yours. Mm -hmm. There was a reason they did not have a functioning teacher licensing program. We fixed the program. There were no calls anymore from teachers. And so, you know, like here, we're not, we're, we're focusing on call time. We're not focusing on the fact that there's just no place where these people are. Not to, no, we're yeah. not focusing on call time. Yeah. The, the so Vermonters were focused yeah. on call yeah. time, and right or wrong, they responded. And it was not in probably, it was a very short term. It was Doritos for dinner. Yeah, well, two million that you could have spent on housing spent on the phones instead. Right. I mean, and it's. Yeah. Yeah. And That's so we will back up that right up the stream even further yeah. that we wouldn't have had that problem if we had had that problem solved or this back here. Or a plan. Or a plan. But we're here where, you know, the reality is here. And then in the hallways, we can work on the bigger issues. But I appreciate it. So I think well, the question at the moment, though, I'm just, does anybody need to have public safety come in or? Okay. So, okay, so let's just, pen we'll just pencil that off unless somebody from government ops says, and trust me, they're looking. Oh. I'm loving our committees of jurisdiction, our tone. They know that dollars are tight and if they can look under the hood and they're asking the questions of like, what's this for and finding some pockets, you know? The, uh, public safety, it's interesting. Public safety's got a vacancy rate current, of current as of December 23rd right. of, 20% in one part and 11% in the other. I'm not sure about the distinction between those two categories. Which normally we would have find ridiculously high. That, that's still a lot. So we're over, to, we came in last year as a 12% and it went down during the spring and it is back up to uh, 20. We have 1,093 vacancies for 80, uh, 453 positions. So we're back at 11 percent statewide. statewide, and 103 of those are listed as being in public safety. And, and I again, I don't know based on the download from DHR's dashboard why there's a distinction between one pool of 376 and 247. Maybe Jim does, um, but there's 103 vacancies between those two. Well, I know there's 55 give or take on the state police. I don't know how many on the. Yeah, is, do, you, do you know which pool is 247 total employees? So you, uh, well, 247 sounds state, state police, police. But the, the PSAP is under the state police for the yeah. uniformed officer. I'm going to look to Maria when she's, when you're done. That, I didn't know. I want to check in because she's the keeper of everything. We are okay with that first thing on the spreadsheet. Oh, the state that's. Police. We're gonna still have pause around the vacancy rate, but we're. I think we could do the second one, Woody. What do you think? The, your your uh, choice. I, I don't want to. The military it. air service contract. Yeah. Yes, I have no problems with that because it goes back to yep. pre-COVID um, issues. Right. Okay. I I do have a question regarding the state police, though. Okay. Sorry. 
Uh, yes, Whitman. <laughs> oh, gee, now we're at Whitman. It's serious. <laughs> this overtime, is that for support for Burlington? No, I asked that question. Okay. Okay. Um, Burlington, there's, there's a contractual agreement that's a different line item, and there's revenue that comes in for use of those contracted agreements, um, and then obviously extra costs. Um, so, um, not a part of this. That's fine. Okay. We just wanted to make sure. That no, I, I had no. a question when the Commissioner of Finance was in, you mm -hmm. know, do. If there's a shortfall there, is that part of this in it? In it because there was the state police right. force in right. Burlington helping yeah. out. Yeah. I, I was kind they of come in for not to, to change they something. I was very there. pleased um, in Fish and Wildlife. They just made a way to cover that. It was yeah. just a weekend in Rutland uh, with their game board taking over for the city police. Um, mm -hmm. Right, that was a very nice thing. It was an extraordinarily nice gesture, and I told the commissioner, went to the funeral. They have by far the best dress uniforms. I mean, they look like Royal Mounties. They really do. Oh, yeah. yeah that, then you go, like, what's in, is that in the budget? And you yeah. go, really? <laughs> you can afford shoes? Yeah, that's probably, that's probably the only time they, they yeah, wear them that that formal uh, activities. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Probably not. So, are you feeling excited? So, Representative Page has put on the table that uh, the um, B216, as he's recommending that there is no further need to, to look at this and that you're good with it. Right. Everybody okay? All right. Sense. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to, you know, when it gets hard, we have to like count. But unless somebody says, oh my, no, ma'am, stop, I got to look at this again. <clears throat> 10 minutes, anybody else? Cannabis is coming in tomorrow. Agency of Human Services is a big deal. Sorry, I didn't mean to. <laughs> no, and I want to hear from education. Do we? Have well, uh, yes, we do. Okay. Friday morning, right? There's a lot to talk about there. So yep. that's not going to happen. Are what about, about the vets' home? Are they Christian Wildlife? Uh, Pat's not here, though. That's no. his. So that was the request for classification. I have a feeling we kind of have to do I that. I think we have to do that. You know, which, which, which one are we on? Uh, uh, just which one are we on? Yeah. Well, do, they, do the stick B702 uh, uh, at the top of page uh, four. Yeah, that's the allied health thing. Yeah, it's a wash. Yeah, okay. We yeah. could probably check well, that out. Do that, Mark? <laughs> All right. All right. The allied health. The um, the allied health for the no, Vermont State Colleges. I'm checking on that. But it's a wash, and I understand it, and it makes sense. I call it a actually. Pass. The only thing I thought about it was like bring an idea. Why don't you think about it? <laughs> so, do you want to check it off, or do you want to leave it? No, let's not quite check it off. Okay. All right. So we can do fish and wildlife. It happens every year, though, right? No, this is new. The Allied this Health is brand new. Yeah, this whole new thing is yeah, it's, 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 it's fairly good. Yeah, okay. And why didn't that if it before? Probably because they were too busy doing other things. And we got a new waiver. The yeah, the, the uh, C1115 yeah, waiver is new. Anyway, I don't know the answer to that. I'm just saying that there's yeah. you know, things that may have. Prevented them from doing it before. Yeah. And then it, you have an aha, and somebody comes in and says, Why can't we? That's the arithmetic error. Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The $1.9 million arithmetic error. I think the only thing on education I'm willing to look ahead. at is the Vermont State Colleges. Just, you know, jump ahead. All the, yeah. Yeah. We're not, we're just, we're not going there. Yeah, that people are just shouting out certain things that we'll, we'll, we'll wait. Okay. Um, we got Sharon, five minutes. Sharon, Sharon Scott is the one who can explain that probably the best. So it is a swap. Oh, the Allied Health? Oh, yeah, yeah, so. yeah it, it's a wall. It comes no, I don't think it's rolled out. Back out. Um, no, no one wants no, to close. Just talk, just talk. DCF. But 318 is receipt of the the big grant, the preschool development grant, which is just federal money coming in that we couldn't have accounted for. And then the 25,000 down 
we could find out what it covered, but that's actually a reduction in federal funds. So would you like to go to B318? Yeah, we can my have sentence. people go. It's on the second, uh, second page near the bottom. Near the bottom. We'll what, let her talk to what her. Chris explained is that this is receipt. I mean, we can confer with confirm, it's federal. but it's receipt of federal um, these are receipts and not receipt of federal grants. But they got twenty five thousand less than they thought they'd get on the community base. But this is not a DCF initiated cut. This is just the feds gave them twenty five thousand dollars less than they expected. And the other big input is the preschool development grant program. Right, and so that's all are, federal dollars. Yeah, so it's nothing we shape or. So your recommendation is that you're you're comfortable with checking I'm out? I'm going to check off something from yeah. DCF on the first day. That's awesome. <laughs> is everybody okay? Yes, it'll be 318. 318, we'll okay. give it a close. Unless we hear something shocking from someone else. That's true. That's right. That's progress. All right, so this is what we're going to do tomorrow in the afternoon. We could start at the top and then what I do is that we comb through each one to see if people are like, no, nope, not ready, ma'am, you know, hold, hold, or go until we so you might want to take a look at your stuff to see if see if you want to bring anything up early. So for those of us who are in heated and contentious divisions, my assumption is we wait for human services to weigh in. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, this is why we often we say to the cameras like we're checking it off saying that. We're, we're waiting for any yeah. kind of input. And it's a little bit different in BAA because of the short, short, short turnaround time. We're not doing the whole former letter. Although I think human services wants to, they are such a big piece of it, be able to write to us. Right. Agriculture in the hall might be able to just have a conversation. Right. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I'm comfortable at least with the variety of ways that fits both the committee and the level of their, their changes and work that they do having it come in and allowed it. some other chairs were like everybody should be the same it's like well but they're we're not <laughs> we're not the only thing right all right so floor update give us oh like floor update. yeah how's she doing so um uh, age 27 passed on a voice vote obviously there's no roll call we would have known we know there's going to be a roll call on 72. Um, um human services just finished their bill section so Emily Kornheiser from Ways and Means is going to give her report, and Tiff will be up after Emily. Oh my goodness! If we close, we could be up there mean? for her with her. Right? Yes, we can go support Tiff. Yeah. All right. That's Anybody, or do you, do you have anything else you want to throw on the table before we go? Because we can't go home. <laughs> we're if we leave here, we have to, we're going to the floor, which I'm fine. I, oh, if there's anything else. Um, Representative Harrison is ready. He's no, got something. No, no, no. Okay. We have education coming in. Is that what I heard? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Education tomorrow. Can you, can you say when? No. Next week. Tuesday. Tuesday. Oh, Tuesday next week. Okay. Okay. Would you do the illness? Are you going to do the language? Separate? Whatever. Yeah. We we go where you right now. It's about where do people want to oh, go no, first. I got, a, I got a very little one. Okay. We can do it when we do that. And it's in the, re, the what do you call it, reversion, rescissions? Reversions. Reversions. Um, yep. 35. Was, yeah. That's why I keep a language packet was, and then a number packet. There was uh, 15,000 for. Can you just the, tell me what page before and we'll go there? <laughs> 35. Oh, page 35. Okay. Yeah, here's where it's, it starts really on 34 and it goes through. There we go. Yeah. Okay. So in the middle of that, 233. Uh, 000 liquor enforcement licensing 15,000. That was money budgeted for body camps. Um, oh, yes. They don't use body camps because they are um, drinking. No, <laughs> they're what do you want? To call it? They're playing the lottery. They're, they're not uniform officers. Oh, they're. Not. they're um, they go into liquor. They're undercover. They're, <laughs> under, they're undercover. So it would be kind of it would, it would be kind of like it. being undercover if you were wearing a body <laughs> cam. <laughs> you really don't see me, but I got this camera. I can smile. Uh, so anyhow, uh, that's that's fine. All right. So 
If anybody, if hearing no objections, we can check that off. That's what we need to have for, if, if you recall as a member on the floor and you would get this cold, think about it from their perspective of like they see, oh, $4 million out of workforce right. recruitment. What's that about? That would spark like, we need an so explanation. Could we, could we make a wild assumption that anything under $100 is like okay on the reversions? Yeah. I, I'm sorry. So, you're, yeah, so somebody is fine. checking 20 cents and- Yeah. Same chart. I'm actually gonna pass on the 200. Same totals of orphan. Remember we gave them 25? Department of Tourism and Marketing. I think that's I don't know what that's also a safe bet. <laughs> um, no, it's very safe. We should probably think those are okay. Okay, you, you've got something on that? That's a big one. Well, that number. has to do with education, and you have, you have individuals that are you know, deployed and um, they're not able to access the education while they're deployed. So, um, so we make that note, deployed individuals not percent. able. Well, that's on page 35, it's uh, yep. 100,000 dollars. Uh, $100,782. Use this education. It's for education. Pushing assistance. Yeah. That's what we need, just the explanation. I don't, you know, that makes sense. Okay, um, if you're okay, I'll check it off. I'm okay, ma'am. You're okay, I'm okay. Huh, well, we could discuss that. Which one? <laughs> oh, that if you're okay? <laughs> Yes, we can. Anything else? Um, on page 39 and 40 and 41. 39, 39, 40 and 41. Yep. And I think I, I am, I am, I'm trying to people. I'm okay with the change in A. Top of page 40 because it carries out the intent of the language as originally proposed. I would I, like to discuss that. Okay. I hope we can't close that right. yet. I am not okay with the strikeout on page 40 and 41. I have corresponded with Adam and he says he keeps it. Thinks it's surplus, but he doesn't think there's a problem leaving it in, and I would like to leave it in. Okay. Uh, that is not rejected. Not, yeah. not accept. So your recommendation, do not accept that last right. strikeout, which yeah. screws it up to the, to right. the at BAA. Yeah. I know that you're not, you know, we're not going to vote on it because I know it's not, but it's just like, okay, that will be your recommendation. But, but if That's you discuss it, at least discuss it before. Why don't you, okay. what, you, know, you can talk with Mark off this. Okay. Okay. Kristen, did you say it does something as well? Tourism or something? Oh, yeah, the two hundred and thirty-seven dollars on for tourism and the one dollar for economic development. Those are safe to cross. <laughs> We're not going to chase down the seventy. Or you know, we could start at the top and just take a look at them quick. If we're going to be here. Um, that was thirty. We're back on thirty-four and thirty-five is the reversions. And don't forget, like Hardy's not coming tomorrow, right? He's coming Friday. Hopefully Friday. Okay, so we will be comfortable, and then he's going to come in and walk us through it, and we can shorten what he has to. He's probably paying attention right now, to Hardy. Why don't we just say anything under two under a hundred dollars? We're going to be okay well, with. Well, this is true, but we'll need to make sure everybody knows it's on the same page of where that's at. So if we go from page thirty-four, there's nothing there, but at the top of thirty-five, it's three dollars and thirty-seven cents. We check that off. Just come down from there. Eighty-eight dollars. We're good. Okay. Go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. Go down. I have no idea what one hundred thirty-six dollars on adult education is. The 136 13. Do you no, you're fine. But I think the three cents for administration is okay. We all can do. Yep, yep. just come over the three cents. Talk to I think we have to go to the down from the top. Yeah. So it's three <laughs> cents, 136. Let's come. They're 385 from parks. I love it. No other appropriations committee in the states would do this kind of stuff. Longer the, safety, longer safety close enough. Yep, for me. 
Unless somebody says no. Okay, and yeah. 20 cents for water, dollar 86, 71 cents. Are you okay Ooh. with the department of tourism marketing? I am. I'm willing to chase it down if people would do, like to do. Do you know what it is? <laughs> Okay. I don't. I don't. We'll yeah. Check it out. We'll, we'll, check, we'll check it out. I'll check it out. Why does it say not? Why do we have to say here, notwithstanding any other provision of law of the country? You know, on, on page 34. Because what is? Because this is transportation fiscal year 2024. The following amounts reversed. It says it for every one of yeah. them. Yeah. Notwithstanding, notwithstanding the any provision of the law to the contrary. Is there yeah. some provision that's... Well, because the budget says that we're going to spend that much. It says, mm -hmm. even though the budget says that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. Oh, the rest of the final The final you get it. Okay. Okay. Now that we talked about tourism, I was meant to leave. Now that we, <laughs> now that Jim's asked me to chase down the two hundred and thirty, I'll do it. Go chase it. Chase it. Just don't watch stop. out. I've got a heavy bottle here. <laughs> All right. Any anything else? Otherwise, maybe we'll go to the floor. So they they passed the, pass the amendment that Teresa brought to the floor on age seventy two by voice vote, and now they're talking about the bill as amendment. People might want to. Okay, so we know we will be going at the We have got to go ahead at some point, anyway. Yeah. Because it will be a little problem. So, so cool. if you want to go to the floor, take take your take your book with you and, <laughs> and get ready for idea. tomorrow. And get ready for tomorrow. See what's yeah. see like, what's that, like, so. that sounds like a great that idea. That sounds wonderful. <laughs> we didn't think so. All right, and I'm gonna Got a meeting at what time? Oh, that might be coming. I'll go to the floor and come back for that.